that's the handout. Cool. Uh, what I'd like to do is just kind of go around the room and have everyone introduce themselves. And I'd like for you to answer two questions. One, how did you hear about this? So we can understand how we're really getting the message out of these uh, workshops that are sponsored by We Can Serve VA. And then the second is, would you have a preference for the next seminar on a weekend, in the evening, during the week, or what that may be in terms of uh, your availability to continue in this four-part series? Okay. Well, I'll start. I'm Marty Radoff, and I'm with a variety of different trail groups. Uh, the Area Pittsburgh Trail Alliance, the Connection Committee of that particular organization, and the Northwest Beauty uh, Trail Association, as well as the Impact Forward Legacy Committee in Green Space. So, uh, how did I hear about this? I help organize it. <laughs> in terms of preference, uh, I'm retired, so uh, I have a very flexible schedule, so it really doesn't matter for me. I can kind of go with uh, This is Ron Steffi. I, I'm Ron Steffi, and uh, I'm a trail organization uh, that I've been consulting, work with uh, Steffi Trail Connection, and I work throughout uh, Western Pennsylvania and West Virginia, a little bit in Ohio, and help uh, trail organizations. Uh, you'll hear more from me. You'll get tired of, of listening to me. Uh, how, how I heard about this is Kim called me to come here and be here and do this. And uh, I'm, I'm not retired. I'm uh, semi-retired. That this, this is one of my uh, passions is the trails. So that's uh, I started a Steffi Trail organization so I could help others and, and stay involved in trails. I'm uh, Kimberly Boss. I am uh, with Northwest Day uh, Trail Association, uh, Impact Glory, the Trail Screen Space Champion. Um, how did I hear about this? Are these two fine gentlemen have truly convinced me of all the value of trails and what they can do for both U.S. individuals and the community? And so they, they lured me in. We saw this great educational opportunity and said, let's give us workshops for people around the quarry. I'm semi-retired, so my schedule is relatively flexible. So whenever you know, accommodates the majority of the people, that's what I do. Okay. Uh, so I'm My name is Diana Evans. I am with the Mead Park Association, and I opened the building today, so I got invited to attend the meeting. I'm also interested in trails. Um, I studied recreation and parks management. How did I learn about this meeting? <laughs> Facebook and then the Mead Park Association. Exciting to see what's going on with trails in Cory. Uh, that should be a lot of fun. We kind of made our own schedule, so timing is not really a, an issue for us when the meetings are. We like to attend them. Uh, and I heard about it from you. We heard about it on Facebook. Mm -hmm. just, just last night, actually. I think I was on the from Pittsburgh, Washington, D.C. Wow. So I don't know if I'll get to that <laughs> this summer or even if before I die. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, I heard about the, this uh, workshop uh, from an email that I got from a fellow member of the uh, authority, Clear Lake Authority. And I, Saturday's weekend, I did. So I'm going to get us started. Um, like I said, we are doing a lot of things you know, with trails and you know, with impact quarry. If you guys have any you know, thoughts, questions, concerns, anything that you think we should you know, consider as we try to make you know, more trails with inquiry, please let us know, and we can investigate them and try to incorporate them you know, as we can. So, and with that, I will turn it over to Rob. Okay. Um, most of what we're going to do today is walk, and we're going to walk a one-mile uh, loop. So we're planning to spend most of the time uh, outside. Um, since it is a one mile loop, we're going to go up and go across uh, to the trail and go down to Elk Street and then come back. But the furthest that you'll be away from here is one half mile. So if it starts to rain or tornadoes, or, uh, you, you just find it be too boring. Well, uh, you're only going to be a half, uh, a half a mile away. 
to, to come back here. And the, the halfway part is probably right around when we'll cross uh, over uh, uh, Bear Creek. So um, I, I guess a couple of things. Uh, number one, I'm not a politician. So if you ask me a question, make sure I answer your question. If I don't answer your question, re-ask it and say, hey, Ron, this is my question. Uh, I really want to uh, answer your questions. If you don't understand something, uh, uh, please let us know and ask questions or say, uh, I don't understand. There's lots of things I don't understand either. Um, and we work through it. One of the things we're gonna do is go over uh, a lot of definitions and some of them don't mean diddly, but uh, uh, some of them are sort of the vernacular that the trail people use. So uh, we'll introduce that to you. And hopefully I don't overbore you with things, but some of it becomes very, uh, uh, there, there's so many laws and regulations anymore. And that's what trails have to abide by it's, uh, at certain places. So we try to make it as simple as possible. Um, other than that, is there anything else people need to start off? The only thing I would say is if anybody needs a pen to take any notes or anything, we have pens up here. And if you want to bottle of water, we've got water in the blue bag that has been donated by Blue Zone, so yay Blue Zone. Um, today might be good for hot chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> On why we did things and why we plan to do things. And if you have better ideas, please bring them up. That that's what I've found through my years with, with trails is it's the volunteers and people involved. And you, you know, you become, uh, I, I hate to say with PennDOT, but PennDOT has its ways of doing things, and you become too custom to just in, being in your own rut. So please don't hesitate to, to mention um, things or suggestions or, and ask questions. So with that, we're supposed to leave here at 820, and I believe it's 820. <laughs> Across here. This will this will be the most boring part too. Um, but one thing I wanted to make sure was some simple terms. And one is a trail, and that's uh, everyone refers to everything as a trail. But there's a difference between a trail and a shared uh, shared use path. And that's because the government said there's a difference. The shared use path is a bicyclist, walkers, uh, a lot of the um, uh, active lifestyle transportation. And they have to meet certain um, codes to be able to do it. Like it should be at least 10 feet wide. And uh, we'll get into some of the other parameters. And But it's not a sidewalk. And... Um, uh, as I said, it's a it's a mix, so you have to follow different things. There's there's accessibility, and there, there's the American Disabilities Act, the Architectural Barriers Act, they define disability universal design. Um, universal design is to try to keep everyone involved in a trail to make it accessible for everyone. And I think with uh, with the years as it's come through, people look at uh, the ADA as right away we think of people with uh, wheelchairs. But um, with my age, being overweight, and other medical problems, I fit into that. That uh, I was in a coal mine accident, almost lost my right foot, and trails helped me rehab that I was able to, to walk again. But I do have problems walking. Um, so, and I have the heart problems that uh, we'll get into. But it's, you, you never know who, who you're, you're, you're meeting and what problems they may have. But that's why we try to make sort of different standards of making it as smooth as possible with a shared use pass, uh, making it as wide as we can, because people on the sidewalk, naturally people are going to walk next to each other but if someone's coming the other way then you're getting in signal signal single file so why not try to make trails that are are just wide enough to, to start with uh so the, those are some of the uh some of the things and uh i'll get into what's called a opdm opdm the other power driven mobile devices 
and uh, that excludes wheelchairs. Wheelchairs are allowed anywhere, but uh, on uh, shared use pass, um, I have a, an e-bike, and I have an e-bike because every once in a while, with my arthritis, I'll be 10 miles from home, and it flares up. And the e-bike can help me uh, uh, get back, but that's that's part of a mobile device that's assisting me. A lot of people don't understand e-bikes or other things, so it's something that if we have time, I'll, I'll mention a lot uh, more. But uh, Kim or Marty, do one of you want to just talk about the uh, crossing sure. right here? <clears throat> sure. So um, this section, and I'll talk more you know, as we're walking, but uh, this uh, section of the trail um, is actually you've got a grant from AARP, and so one of the things that we're doing is we're going to make sure that everything is ADA uh, compliant. And as we were looking to bring people to Mead Park, because we thought you know Mead Park is really a huge community treasure. And a lot of people, if they don't have cars, it's maybe a little bit more difficult for them to get there. You know, our vision is to um, have trails that go throughout the city into the neighborhoods. And so we thought if we can get people on the trail, we want to give them a safe way to get across, you know, Mead Avenue. Mead Avenue doesn't have a lot of traffic. It's, the speed limit is very slow. So there's nothing that's truly required, but we thought we would want to add some type of an enhanced crosswalk. And so we have purchased, it's called a rectangular, rapid flashing beacon. And so what we will have is we will have a crosswalk, you know, painted actually, you know, on Mead Avenue. And then if you're if you're ready to cross, if there's traffic coming or whatever, I mean you just push the button and then the, the, the beacon will flash you know around that just to alert the driver of hey, there's somebody at that crossing that is gonna be in this in the street. And so you know you need to yield to them, give them a little bit more time. So just if, if people have small children, if they have people that are gonna take a little bit longer it gives, gives them that added confidence to get across the street safely. So, any questions on that? I don't walk as well as I used to either. <laughs> and I have a, uh, it's ADA approved, it looks like a trike, it's called the slide. It has three wheels. It's, it's motorized by battery. Is that going to be okay on that trail? Those, and, and that's exactly what the OPDMD like is, is for. And so they have the requirements uh, of each trail um, uh, organization can decide on what they allow. Okay. And with the width, the height, how fast it can go and different things like that. But I think that's that's a lot of people think, well, it's just non-motorized. Well, a lot of these by state law, even though it has a motor, the government says it's non-motorized, which becomes confusing. So I think that's up to like the different parts of the, the trail that they, uh, part of their, on on Facebook and where you come onto a trail that they sort of spell out what it is. And it's not going to be, well, is this allowed? It's, does it fit into it? Is it less than 36 inches wide? Is it less than a hundred pounds? Is it less than 750 uh, watts? And, and things such as that. Now, one thing, uh, just about everyone is against internal combustion engines because they make noise. But with the batteries, uh, you know, they, they can do a super job. So even though I don't know specifically for here, most places are allowing that. And that's part of why to be involved. So so it can be framed on what's allowed and what's not allowed. Things is, as I mentioned, all of them are sort of interwoven with each other as, as you try to develop things. Um, and Impact Quarry in general. So Impact Quarry purchased this parcel um, last fall um, with the intention of trying to find a way to connect the actual trail to the park. Marty will talk to you shortly about uh, the Erie Pittsburgh Trail and the Industrial Heartland uh, Trail Coalition, all of which you know, the Quarry Junction Greenway Trail is a part of that. We've got maps in the handout. And so once we get these, this trail actually connected to the things that are around us, you can go to Cleveland, you can go to Pittsburgh, you can go to Washington, you can go anywhere you want. And you, <laughs> you do your dream and you ride your, you ride your bike and you get there. So, um, so we purchased this land and you can see we've got some stakes and things around. Uh, the first thing that we did last year was created a, uh, a grant application for AARP, uh, which was a national grant, so we were just thrilled and honored that we 
receive that. Um, and our intention is to put a connecting trail, you know, from the rail bed, you know, over to Mead Avenue, um, have a couple of benches so that people can sit and relax and talk, have some pollinator, I'll call them some pollinator gardens, and then also have a pollinator meadow. Um, the area you see there, redesigning things but to have uh, you know places for people to sit you know eat their lunch you know play checkers and, and just try to make it a community hub um, we also have uh, trails planned to um, travel around the circumference of North Hills because unless you're a golfer most people have never been to North Hills I grew up here I had never been to North Hills other than you know up at the clubhouse looking around mm -hmm. but when you walk around the the golf course it's absolutely beautiful you know it's another community gym and so we want to make sure that's available to the entire community uh, we also have trails planned to go off of the Corey Junction Greenway Trail kind of through the woods you know over towards the uh, country club we have one planned uh, we're calling it the South Loop Trail um, that we definitely want people's input on because that hill is so steep <laughs> so I think we're gonna have some trails that are really nice and flat we will have some that have a significant grade so if you want to get your cardio in that's the one for you um, and then we have one that we're calling the emerald necklace that is intended to really uh, kind of go around the entire perimeter of the city and reach into the neighborhood so that we can all be connected so we have big plans you know it's not uh, going to happen overnight but you know i think we have an enthusiastic team and we keep chipping away at it we will get the trails in and I think once we get them in and people see uh, how they're being used and, and how much people enjoy them, then I think we'll get more enthusiasm. So any questions on that? What? Sure. Do, do what we call to make the Tory Climber right. Trail yeah. to the Spartansburg, and is that going to be so, part of it? Perfect question. So based on advice of a really smart person, you know, because we, we kept saying, okay, the original, you know, the trailhead right now for the Quarry Junction Greenway Trail, you know, is over by the concrete plant back behind Tim right. Hortons. So, like, we got to get, how do we get across 426? How do we get across Route 6? And a really smart man said, ignore that for now. Start building the trails where we have the property, where it's easy, and then we'll come back to that. Right. Because if we get all of our other trails going and connected to East Branch, and then that's the only gap, then other connected people that we know can say, hey, we have a trail gap right here, yeah. and it will help us get the funding. Because to try to get across 426 and, and 6, it's it's going to be a challenge, and, and we've met with PennDOT several times. Um, 
and it's still, you know, is a challenge. So, so we, we definitely want to connect to that. We are actually working with um, people north of Clymer because they're trying to expand the, the trail north, the, the Sherman. Yeah, yeah, sure. Ron is doing a lot of work with Spartansburg. And so we definitely want, when we go through the Rayland Trail Park, we want to just keep on going towards Spartansburg so that we can connect to East Branch. Right. And so our goal is that, uh, the other thing that Marty will probably talk about as well is um, uh, Erie County has been awarded a grant to uh, evaluate the feasibility of, I don't know if it's we call an the alternate. leg, an alternate path for the Erie to Pittsburgh Trail. So rather than kind of, you know, going up along the lake into New York and then coming back down, that it would come directly from Erie to Corey. Mm -hmm. And so if that happens, that would just be awesome, yeah. right? Because you can certainly do 30 miles in a day, right? And if you wanted to go up to Dobbins Landing on your bike, I mean, you'd, you'd have the path to do it. Um, and, and so, yeah, so we're really, that's why we're really trying to work with with all of our neighbors and, and looking to see, you know, how do our neighborhood trails tie into the Erie to Pittsburgh Trail, you know, which ties into this trail, which to that trail, and you, know, you can just go further and further and further. So that is our goal. Where can we go the easiest first to start to do it? As I keep telling Kim and Marty, you know, get the train moving. Once you start to get the train moving, people are going to notice and they're going to hop on board. So I see a lot of organizations, they try to come up with this 10 year plan and they spend so much time on it and it never gets implemented. The thing is, is start to get people to talk about it, get them something that they can see, use, touch, smell, and, and, and really go from there. And I think that's a, that's an important part of what we're trying to do. Uh, we can serve is affiliated with the DCNR, um, Department of Conservation and Natural Resources of Pennsylvania. And they are uh, who we actually received the grant from for the trail from here down to, to Elk Street. Uh, Ron, uh, is, is, uh, Ron is Marty, you've been quiet. I figured this is where I could talk about trails. So I'm going to talk about actually three elements here. I'm going to be talking about the uh, Corey Junction Greenway Trail, which we are actually standing on now, the Erie to Pittsburgh Trail Alliance, which is a part of that network, which is a 270 mile uh, trail. And that is also a part of the Industrial Heartland Trail, which is now uh, up to 1,700 miles of trail and that encompasses three states and I think 29 counties so that's something that goes into New York, Pennsylvania and Ohio and that's a coalition of all of these different smaller trail groups and longer trail groups and with that in mind they would then eventually connect to the Great American Trail which is going to go from the east coast to the west coast so if you're Filling up for a challenge. There is a trail that can reach from the Atlantic to the Pacific. And this all started probably in the 1980s and 90s. And that's when railroads were abandoning their different lines. And so that became an opportunity for enthusiasts on trails to be able to, to develop a network and an organization that would be able to turn those rail beds into alternate transportation. So that is a, a, a great asset for people like us in Cory to be able to work with larger organizations and be able to develop our trails locally mm -hmm. and expand that into a much larger regional and now national uh, opportunity of the trail network. So. Uh, in terms of the timeline, uh, as Jordan pointed out, Jim, that this first 800 feet and over to the park, that will be done this summer. The DCNR grant that we received in January is from about where I'm standing down to Elk Creek, or up to Elk Street. And we have two years to complete that. So it's not like we're under the gun to get it done this summer. So 
they realize that in projects like this, there are constraints, and so we have uh, two years to be able to complete this work. Our goal is to have it done uh, before the snow flies uh, next winter, but if things continue to be as wet as they are and so on and so forth, we'll, we'll probably have some issues in, in meeting that timeline, but that's really what we're looking at here is the DCNR grant. Uh, we were able to get matching funds locally to be able to secure that. It was a 50 50 match. This here was done all locally and uh, a lot of sweat equity with volunteers and some smaller grants and materials to be able to lay the limestone down and get that train moving. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions on any of those? And uh, one of the things I wanted to talk about was just construction. There's going to be new construction, and we really don't know what the soils and everything are going to be like. So there's a lot of question marks that's, uh, or questions that uh, need to be answered, and we may not have the right answer the first time, but it, it'll be a steady improvement. Here we know a little bit more of what we had. Since there's a railroad bed here, it's pretty firm to start with. The, the drainage is gone, but uh, a lot of the drainage is being uh, reintroduced and that we're going to put what's called a treadway. And the treadway is going to be the limestone here. It'll probably be about four inches thick. It'll be smooth and it'll be compacted uh, so that, uh, you know, bicycles will be able to go on it. Uh, wheelchairs can go on it. Uh, uh, baby buggies can go on it, strollers and, and other things. But it does get soft in the wintertime, just like everything else in, in northwest Pennsylvania. So um, there, there's a, a time period where it does get soft and you're not able to use it and everyone just accepts it. But then again, by the time the summer's here, it's, it's nice and hard. Um, so the construction of the trail, this, this is more or less what we're trying to do here is uh, a maintenance of uh, an old railroad line. And instead of actually rebuild it, just take what we have and try to reestablish what the what the railroad had. Now we're not going to put wooden ties down here. That wouldn't be very comfortable. <laughs> but we're going to use a, a different surface. Over here is a, a different construction. But the construction also includes. Well, there needs to be signs here because if a person's coming down to here, where does that go and where does that go? So it's it's that and benches and everything. And lots of times, again, once you get people using the trail, then it's easier to get money and you get volunteers that become involved that you can put these benches in and even build the benches, uh, get the signs, answer the questions through the signage that, that, that people have. And I'm a great uh, believer in using volunteers to be able to do as much work as possible. Uh, through the different organizations I've worked with, we've uh, used the, the hourly labor rate, which right now is around $25 a, an hour, for a volunteer doing work on here, and leverage that to get funding. And that has helped us, uh, I think I'm up around $4 million in the projects that we've been able to secure from that. From just where uh, Rob's work uh, involved with, with the Clear Lake Authority, we have over a million dollars that started with just volunteers uh, doing the work. So it really adds up, and that's part of why we're having the workshop here is try to explain things and, and then try to grow to get more people involved. Uh, something else I want to mention is best management practices. And usually that's talked about with uh, water, but it's with everything. That it, It's sort of, a, uh, you know, you, you're never completed with a trail. There's always better theories that come up and uh, you need to improve with the times because things are different. So I, I mentioned about an e-bike an electric uh, scooter. You know, 20 years ago, you didn't hear anything like that. If you had an e-bike, why, maybe you could have gone a mile and that's all the further it would have taken. But with water, you know, they've done a lot of work. This this was at least a, a foot higher in here. So, you know, the easiest thing to do would be, oh, let's just fill everything in and then we get away with the water. Well, is that the best management practice? If you do that, where's the water going to go? And if you do that, you may be happy, but are you going to cause more problems over here? 
So what we're trying to do is look at the drainage and also the, the idea isn't to get the waters quickly down the Bears uh, um, Creek as fast as possible. I live in Catania along the Allegheny River, so I need everyone here to slow the water down a little bit <laughs> so that, that it is uh, just not something that comes quickly down to the river and there's flooding and everything. So that's what we're looking at doing. How can we somewhat manage the water, detain it a little bit so that uh, it doesn't affect the trail, but we're not making it straight down through here. Plus we had to cross here. We may put a, one pipe in, a, in the wrong place. We may be moving it up here, but we're trying to think of how to do everything here. And clear up on Route 6 up there. The water from Route 6 goes into a inlet and then it comes out um, by the, clo the vehicle closest to us. So there's a little bit of a drop the whole way here, and we can't just plug this up here. We're, we're trying to think, okay, what can we do that it can slowly migrate down through? What do we have with, uh, with vegetated swells? What can we plant here that actually will use water? And uh, the sun's not out, so you don't see the, uh, the, the red twig uh, dogwood as, as much here. You can sort of see the red above those bushes there. It is very pretty in the in the winter time, and then in the summer, why you don't notice the red as much with the uh, with the leaves on. But everything sort of fits together. That can you use vegetation that'll actually drink more water, that will pull it up into it, so that everything's not going to get to the Bear Creek. So it, it's much like what we're trying to do with the trails. We're connecting to Mead Park, connect to downtown, connect to Spartansburg, connect to Pittsburgh, connect to to Pittsburgh to connect it. One segment they had where a guy would say, oh, that's good. And they'd say, oh no, that's bad. And they'd go back and forth. But that's exactly what you have with the trails here. You try to take care of the drainage and then you have this downpour. You think, oh geez, now, now where do we go? Well, it was in your phase as you're developing in that and you saw what a problem was so you can solve it. So it was a bad thing, but it can be a good thing. And, and that happens over and over and over again. With, uh, with, with trails. Wait till you see it today. Well, yeah. Wait till uh -huh. you see it today. Oh. <laughs> Those beavers are the not doing you any favors. Are alive They're back. And, well. and a lot of these lower limbs will be uh, cut out uh, simply because once once they get leaves on them and you get a surface on here and you get someone tall like me in a bicycle, why you're running into leaves and everything else. So uh, we, we try to uh, cut them back. But the high canopy, if you go through wooded areas, you can see into the, uh, into the woods. If this is all wooded area, you can see into it. Where if it's uh, where it gets a lot of sunlight, quite often it's just a hedgerow that's along here. You really can't see any. Uh, you can see the amount of water that's going down through there. Uh, what month was it? Was it July or August that we came down through here, Kim? And our arms just got covered with uh, mosquitoes. I think, yes, yeah, both months. <laughs> and uh, so we're trying to take care of the problem with mosquitoes by getting the water to run and again using best management practices. Are there places that we can make it uh, frogs and turtles and other things that may eat mosquito larvae will actually uh, benefit us. Uh, and as you can see along some of these places, the adjacent landowner, this was an abandoned railroad, no one was taking care of it. They dumped a lot of their material along here. So we're thinking, okay, what's the best plant way to take care of drainage along here? We have an open ditch along here and try to catch this water before it comes to the trail. Are we gonna, as we make a ditch line, are we gonna make that unstable? Do we need to take some of this material out and try to work with the adjacent landowner? Um, looking at different maps and knowing the history of the railroad, probably the utility line that you see is about where the property line would be also. So with this mulch and everything, you can have them made just faster with the mosquitoes. So we're trying to think what trees need to come out. They're, they're in ribbons and trying to think of what's the best way to take care of the drainage here.
but also make some kind of a livable border between here and the adjacent landowners so that they're respectful of your property, but all the land, all the trail users are respective of their property and, and stay on the trail. So this can remain firm. And I mentioned about a, a smooth, firm surface. And one of the things that we want to do is a wheelchair, is leave an indentation on it. If it is, then we don't have it quite firm enough. So we need to either try to get it to dry out more, compress it more, or, or do something different. Uh, Ken had mentioned about invasive plants. I don't know my plants good enough. But I think that green may be, uh, I don't remember the name of it, but uh, there's a lot of it here. So even as we develop this, one of the things we may do is try to scrape this up and have it all in one mound and control where it is instead of spreading it all around like a lot of construction companies do, gather it and see if we can uh, uh, just kill it being in the mound and covering it with compost and putting the heat to it. You can see there's an algae. I think that's called uh, Didymo. Give them uh, access because I found out if if you work with them, then they may come and take care of a lot of this section here when a branch comes down Ooh, yeah. or something like that. And, and one of the things with it being limestone and in the trees, uh, leaves come down. Mm -hmm. So you need to sort of clear those leaves in the fall too, where your treadway becomes narrower and narrower and narrower. Uh, so it's part of the maintenance. But the best maintenance, again, is getting more people involved and working with the adjacent landowner instead of squabbling about a foot here and a foot there is one of the more successful ways to be able to do it. <laughs> you know, more than that, but it, it, you're restricted with how steep it can be for a shorter amount of time. So we just try to go nice and flat. Now, one of the things that we talked about the drainage on the hillside to the, looking up there to the right is, well, do you have a drain coming into there to take care of when it's raining in that? But again, you have to look and see everything's going to come downhill. So are you going to put more water over into there that's already wet? Or you'll see a creek's established going down here. But again, you have to think, what if, what what is the uh, net result of uh, what are you trying to do and work with nature. Uh, another thing I like to do is just use whatever you have in the area. Here someone has dumped a bunch of rocks and some cement in that, and we have the water going into a drain, and it actually crosses under and comes over into a small stream there. Yeah. <laughs> we can see it's sort of plugged there, so we're looking at, well, can we use that to actually build a head wall and stabilize that a little bit more and make it a little rock dam. You can see all the leaves are right in front of the drain there. So can we catch it like four feet before that with uh, with the material we have at hand and then keep that open so we don't have to come down here and, and open that up in the middle of a, of a rainstorm. Is it, I'm looking for kids that got to do community service. <laughs> I'll make it enjoyable for them. Yeah. There are active beavers around here, and you'll see their dam on down there as we we go across the, uh, the run. And you can see what the, what's down there. And the experience that I've had with beavers is they seldom chew the whole way through unless it's a small one. If they'll chew part way. And then there'll be somewhere else where it, it falls down. Um, and, you know, we're looking at taking out a lot of these trees that they're going to uh, uh, chew up anyhow, maybe take some of their uh, food source away um, because uh, it, it's just going to add to maintenance. And on the maintenance of the trail, we try to design it so it's as easy as possible. So here we want to try to go from shoulder to shoulder, from where it starts to go down on both sides. You'll have a berm on the sides, and again, the, the, the treadway here. But make it very easy that if you're mowing something, that you can go right up through here on a straight line and just be able uh, to mow. But we'll also take some vegetation over the shoulder to keep it clear so that the stuff doesn't grow like this, uh, like this right here that is growing right out. That we try to keep things over the edge. And this is a red... Uh, twig, uh, I believe it is, dogwood, 
you see how nice and red it is and it's it really likes uh, uh, moisture so as we're cutting this down we may make some plantings down by the toe of the slope by the creek to allow it to start to go because if you clear everything out you don't know what's going to grow it could be invasives and stuff that you don't want so if you're planting stuff you can use the stuff that's already here uh, that reduces your cost uh, and as you get the fund, uh, grant from funders you can tell them well we cut down the red twig uh, dogwood we're able to use that to plant to stabilize uh, the, uh, the slope because it is it, it, it gets a bunch of little roots on the bottom and, it, and it's really good to stabilize slopes so they're they're seeing how everything again sort of fits together you're doing one thing but you're getting the benefits uh, from it you can see how much that little stream has just increased in uh, the volume of water the whole way as it goes down and we'll probably have one more shop at some time we're going to come down here marty has loppers and all the loppers are is we can cut the little things like this that we don't want and we'll cut it down and we'll clear this and that's what we're going to do with volunteers and by doing that with volunteers that increases our our every hour is 25 bucks to chain right there so 25 dollars you can get a contractor to come in here the levels so one leads to another and that's how you get the trail bill um users going past it's on may we're looking at what kind of screen <coughs> The, uh, the black raspberry here makes a nice green, but you don't want it near where someone has to mow that uh, they come off the streets up. So you try to take care of that. But again, that's where the red twig uh, 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 dogwood may come in. And so again, working with the adjacent landowner and thinking, well, what can be screening, but you're not making it an area that. Uh, uh, I was a teenage boy at one time, many years ago, but you don't want them where people are going to gather and do things that they shouldn't be doing. Mm -hmm. So it's always uh, uh, trying to think what's the best way to do it and what's the best way to control it. Comes down and uh, goes into uh, uh, Bear Creek. But you may want to look down into there and just see uh, how deep it is. It is pretty deep down. Oh, in yeah. There. Uh, one thing we're looking at is we go across the creek and this, do we want to have benches in this area? Because is this going to be a place where people are going to want to stop anyhow and uh, just enjoy uh, uh, the field being flooded out by the beavers? <laughs> and, uh, 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 but that's all, and, instead of so many, they say, okay, every 200 feet we'll put a bench. Well, have a reason to put a bench somewhere. That, uh, so as, I, as I get older and older, why maybe there is more to the distance <laughs> that it needs to get go, but. You know, really have a reason, and sometimes people just like to stop and be able to relax and enjoy a view that you may have. Oh, yeah. What can we cut down and plant so we're, we're growing what we want to grow there? And I'm always against uh, ornamental uh, trees and different things. I like to use uh, the natives because that's what grows here, and they're the ones that uh, um, will have more sustainability. Does that red twig dogwood, does that have any flowers in the spring at all? Uh, I think it, it actually early, late spring, early summer, that it just has uh, little flowers, but it's okay. not like the, the floribunda dogwood. Floribunda, yeah. the flowering dog. The company, Steffi Trail Connections, is that you make all these different connections. And that's part of it is with the pollinator gardens that you're introducing people to uh, uh, the nature and the environment and, and what's there. So how, how can you more strongly make that connection and show that uh, uh, it's not just a trail, you're introducing people. There's, there's other reasons to use it other than just for recreation or exercise and transportation, that it's a a place of enjoyment that people can come out and just get away from the phones and TV and everything and, uh, and have some yeah. more now than ever. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, and that's what we saw that uh, during COVID, why all the counters were long trails went very, very high. That uh, people were going out to there. And it's, uh, as it went on, you saw the counters in the urban areas really go up. 
Then they had a slight drop, but it was the more rural areas that took a big rise because people were tired with everyone using the trails in the city that they started to travel more to actually get away from, mm -hmm. from everyone. One other thing that we have to do here is we're going to have to designate that this is the end of the finished trail so people don't try to, to go down through there. So it's always one of those things that you have to have an added cost that you're doing it. But also in this area, and perhaps when we get the other area finished, start to have signs of what's down here, the, the, the why's down here. Oh, that, yeah. uh, where can you go um, for a convenience store and, and things like that? So you're always thinking, how can you, again, the connections, how can you connect to this, the, the town, uh, everything else? And we talked about how it connects to Erie, going down to Spartansburg and beyond. And uh, Spartansburg is going to, the uh, East Branch Trail, uh, over the next uh, uh, two years, there will probably be about uh, eight miles of trail improved down there. So you're going to see lots of work uh, being done there. And we start to get involved a little bit with trail work and uh, maybe do some of the, the clearing of the uh, small trees and, and different things. So. Give, give us some feedback so we know where to go from from here. I think it's going to be awesome. Take two years and speed up. We'll be right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to We're happy to see what you're doing, and I'm encouraged, you know, um, just to be a part of the community and stuff, just to see what's going on and to be involved in it. I think we can all just kind of work together. And, you know, as a community, and saying that we part will make it better, and even in our, in our own neighborhoods, you know, I walk around my neighborhood and I pick up trash, and you'll see me carrying a bucket, and I purchase one of those pick stickers, just because we can all make this community a better place, and it, it's a ripple effect. So if people see you doing that, they're going to want to do it too. If they see you out using the trails, they're going to want to, you know, it disrupts all the people. 